in an age of lawlessness and despair. The empire of man lay in ruins, torn asunder by civil war, and racked by famine and plague. Desperate, unscrupulous men deserted the temples of their fathers and gathered in forbidden cults, seeking the favor of the dark gods. And so it was, in the year 2301, that a Kurgan warlord named Asavar Kul united the savage tribes of the Chaos Wastes and made war upon the realms of men. The invaders entered the distant northern kingdom of Kislev and sacked its largest city, Prague. They sacrificed its people to their dark gods, and any who managed to flee were driven into the freezing wilderness. The Empire seemed powerless to stop the Chaos Horde, and many feared that the end of the world was at hand. But in the Empire's darkest hour, a nobleman from the south named Magnus rallied the people of the Empire to resist the invaders, uniting the warring Elector Counts in the process. The Imperial Army marched to the rescue of the Kislevite capital, fighting Kool's army in a massive battle outside the city walls. Joined by mighty heroes from all across the land, Magnus defeated Kool in single combat, and the Chaos Horde was scattered to the winds. Blessed by the gods and heralded as the true emperor, Magnus returned to Nuln in triumph. But even as the old world celebrated Magnus's victory, the dark gods were planning their revenge. All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Warhammer Chaos Bane, or welcome back if you caught my beta footage. So the game's finally out. I uh, it's it's on Steam. Everything is good to go. They've got all of the all the characters. Multiplayer is functional, and I think you can get to the end of the game. I'm assuming as such. I don't really know if they have any like future plans for this game, but for all intents and purposes, it's finally here, and we get to play it. Uh, so Shell and I are going to be playing this game together. Uh, she's going to be playing the the Wood Elf Archer. I'm going to be playing the Dwarven Slayer, and we've uh, filmed the first chapter so far, and it's a lot of fun. It's, I mean, it's very much just d any kind of standard action, action adventure hack and slash, uh, Diablo style game with a couple of like little bits here and there that kind of set it apart. It, it gets that satisfying gameplay loop of go out, kill a bunch of enemies, grab a bunch of loot, come back, equip the good stuff, sell the rest, and then go back out there again and again and again and, again, and again. But it looks nice. It's got some some great voice acting for a couple of the characters. We really, really like the Slayer. And the narrator ain't bad. I'm pretty sure it's the same voice actor that now haunts my dreams in, like, half the other games. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. I can't find the voice acting credits for it, but that's okay. Anyway, I guess we'll be starting with Shell's intro, then we'll go on mine, and then we'll get into the game. So, hope you enjoy. Alright, this is Alessa, and she looks to be a Wood Elf Scout. Snaking between her enemies while sowing death in, her rank, in their ranks with grace and ferocity, Alessa is a ruthless archer who prefers cunning over brutality. Her knowledge of nature allows her to call upon powerful allies and set lethal traps to control her opponents, while she finishes them off from afar with her arrows and deadly poisons. Alessa is a young wood elf from the Athel... Loren? Oh. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I can't really see the text very well. The font is hard well. to read, The yeah. font is hard to read, especially when there's trees and foliage behind it. So, Athel Loren, but now roams the old world in search of adventure. Firing fearless, she hunts her enemies in the shadows like a vengeful spirit. Uh, okay, I probably have to hit play to see your story. The life of a wood elf there we go. is one of tireless service to the great forest of Athel Loren, protecting it from those who would do it harm. Sometimes, however, it happens that a young Azrai is born with an urge to wander. An overpowering curiosity and a desire for adventure that will not be denied. Known as the Windborn, these wood elves can be vexing to their elders. 
but have the potential to become great rangers if their adventurous nature is properly harnessed. And so young Windborn are given leave to wander the wide world for a short period of time, no more than a hundred years, to see all they can of the wider world before returning to the Atholoran and taking up their duties. You had been wandering the old world for little more than a year when you heard the news of Asavar Kul's invasion. A human named Magnus was raising an army to drive back the Horde. It sounded like an epic adventure, the very thing you'd left the Athol Loren to find. And so you crossed the depths of the Great Brightfall to find the Imperial Army. That night, you slipped into the army camp and made your way to Magnus's tent where you offered your services as a scout. Impressed by your skill, Magnus accepted and made you a part of his growing retinue. Thus began your first great adventure, guiding the growing human army across the Empire and into the frozen lands of the North. The great battle outside the walls of Kislev was more terrible than you could have imagined. You kept close to Magnus during the fight and joined him in the heroic charge that slew the Chaos Lord and turned the tide of the battle. After the battle was won and the dead put to rest, you returned with Magnus to the city of Nome, where a hero's welcome awaited you. But the noise and bustle of the human city has begun to wear on you, and the urge to wander has taken hold again. As the sun sets over Nome, you wonder if the time has come to leave the city and seek a new adventure elsewhere. Slayers are formidable fighters who constantly seek tougher duels and ever more dangerous opponents. Bragi is one such slayer and certainly among the toughest. The longer the battle, the fiercer his rage, which fuels the strength of his blows as he cuts through the hordes of enemies and withstands their attacks. A slayer lives and dies for glory and redemption. Honorable and fierce, Bragi Axe Spider never shies away from a fight with the most dangerous enemies he encounters. As a young dwarf in the great city of Karaza Karak, you were taught the legends of your ancestors. Ever since, you have longed for the day when you could win fame and glory of your own and restore the luster of your much diminished clan. When High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer called for warriors to aid Kislev during the Great Chaos Invasion, you were one of the first to pledge your service. Along with your father and your younger brothers, you left Karaza Karak behind, marching eagerly to war. It wasn't long before you were in the thick of the fight, trapped inside the city of Kislev. You and your kin fought fiercely against the Chaos Horde. When Kul's first assault breached the city gates, it was the dwarfs who led the counterattack that drove the enemy back and saved the day. Your fearlessness in battle earned you the name Axe Biter, and the Kislevites hailed you as a hero. But the more you tasted of glory, the more you began to crave it. When Magnus's army arrived outside the city, your thirst for immortal fame ended in tragedy. Leading a force of 300 dwarfs, you tried to fight your way out of the city to join the Imperials and fight Kool's army together. It was a deed worthy of legend, but not even Grimnir himself could have fought his way through so vast a horde. Your reckless charge was driven back at a bitter cost. Half of the valiant dwarfs that had followed you were slain, including your father and all of your brothers. Racked with guilt over the deaths of your kin, you swore powerful oaths of vengeance against the Dark Powers. And so you chose the path of the Slayer, seeking redemption through a glorious death in battle. When the final battle outside the city walls began, you went forth alone to find Asavar Kul and challenge him to single combat. You carved a bloody path through the enemy, reaching the Chaos Lord in time to see him fall to Magnus and his knights. After the battle, you accepted an invitation from Magnus to join his retinue and return with him to Null. As far as you were concerned, the new Emperor owed you a glorious death, and with many of Asavar Kul's champions still alive, you could be sure Magnus would not lack for foes. It was an age of lawlessness and despair, a time of dark magic, treachery, and war. 
It is a night made for witchery and evil deeds. And across the city, guardsmen clutch their weapons tightly and count the hours until the dawn. Sleep is hard to come by on a night such as this. The air is tense, and memories of the battle at Kislev leave you restless and on edge. Suddenly, a peal of thunder shatters the stillness, followed by a howling wind that shakes the tower to its foundations. Foul magic curdles the air, and screams echo in the courtyard outside. The tower is under attack! What's all that noise? Best take a look. Alright! Uh, let's see. So now that we've got all those intros out of the way, let's go see what's going on. Ah! Hi! You haven't even introduced us! That's okay. I'll do it in post. An attack! Ha! Thank the ancestors! If it's Magnus they want, they'll have to go through me first. I'd best get to the throne room. I wonder if my character will ever be able to speak or because you're the I primary think... player. Yeah, we could always uh, switch, switch it off. out. Yeah, or have your your character be the quote-unquote primary one or who knows what. Yeah, so... I still have my fairy friend. Yep. Or at least I believe they are fairy. All right. Now, is this a lock and aim, or yeah, so how your does character this work? auto aims at the nearest enemy, so Ooh, you don't need to worry too much. That's helpful. Yes. So, are we? Oh. You have a. I have a grappling hook. So if you use the right stick, you can actually, uh, you can actually traverse the world. Oh, okay. So I have a dodge roll. I have one hell of a grapple. Damn. <laughs> I mean, then again, you are quite stout. Yeah, I. Yeah. Oh, it even hits. Uh, hurts people. Okay, so my stats are... Yeah, actually, I should be the second player, because my stats are in the bottom left. And your stats are in the bottom right. Oh, because you want to have reference each side? Yeah. No, that's true. Oh, well. We'll, we'll fix it after after this area. Uh, This is kind of the, the initial tutorial. I haven't actually done this before. The, these were... Oh, treasure chest. Uh, it's a lie! Hmm... Now, I noticed that occasionally my butterfly will... I don't know oh. if she heals me or what she's gathering, but occasionally she runs into me. There we go. Thanks, Sigma, you're here. There's monsters everywhere. The tower's being overrun. I know. Exhilarating, isn't it? No. Where's Magnus? Upstairs in the throne room. There's armor in a chest by the stairs. Take whatever you need, but hurry. Oh, so now we can interact with it. Ah, so this is the armor. Hatchet for me. Uh, I think the Troll Slayer tattoos were for me. Oh, should I plop it on the ground? Probably. How do we access our inventory? I think you just took maybe everything? Or, no. Or is everything shared? Yeah, check it. Uh, press select to open up your inventory. Select? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it might just be shared between the two of us. That is a possibility. I just have... I don't actually know how to check what we... What our, like, overall inventory is. I just have that for equipped items. I have the short bow. Actually, you seem to have acquired all the loot. I have nothing here. Okay. We'll, Unless... have, to, we'll have to test it in the future. How about I just pick up everything and... Uh, if we share inventory, awesome. Whoop. So you have a new, new ability. Oh, so okay. So you can press B. B. Uh, so this game works off of an energy system and a cooldown system. So you generate energy with your basic attack and your your secondary attack. I see. Attacks. Yeah. So I have a, an arrow spray. I need to fight. Yep. So should you'll... we have checked the lower right? Uh, not really. No. I, in my general uh, experience with this game, that full exploration is. So you have experienced this game prior? Yeah, I played the beta. the throne room, the air seethes with foul magics. The Chaos Sorceress stands before the throne, and Magnus, the savior of the Empire, is caught within her spell. There's only one thing to do. Roaring in battle oaths, you ready your axe and charge! I think I'm going to turn down the volume just a bit. you regain your senses, the battle is over. The Sorceress is gone, leaving you and Magnus for dead. The shouts of angry men fill the throne room, but these are not guardsmen. They are witch hunters, the Empire's feared inquisitors, led by none other than the infamous Heinrich Voss. 
You are under arrest for the murder of the Emperor Magnus, Voss declares. I try to tell him about the sorceress, but Voss refuses to listen. I see no sorceress here, he shouts. Only you and a room full of dead men. Confess your crimes, dwarf, Voss threatens. We will have the truth from you one way or another. After a week in the dungeons, you'll tell me everything I want to know. But before the witch hunter could make good on his threat, a commanding voice filled the room. Stop this madness at once! Teglis, Law Master of the High Elves, regards Voss coldly. Raggy Axebiter has told you the truth, he said. It is you who have refused to listen. Teglis examines Magnus in silence. He lives, thank the gods, the High Elf says at last. But he is in the grip of a powerful curse. It is only a matter of time before he succumbs. No one outside this room must know what happened here. If the people learn that Magnus has fallen, then everything he fought for will have been for nothing. The fate of the Empire lies in our hands. We must find this sorceress and end the curse before it's too late. If Magnus dies, the Empire dies with him. The pacing for the dialogue sometimes seems off, and we've actually heard it clip. Yeah, they they actually, as far as I next. can tell, what they do is they actually cut his dialogue up into pe like a bit piecemeal. But yeah. there's no there's no pause or pacing in between one sentence and the next, and yeah, so they had him read the whole oh. thing out, and then they cut it up to make his pacing faster. Yeah, that was super loud. I've turned it down. Hopefully, it will not be nearly as. Yeah, ear maybe by having it a hundred percent dialogue volume. I, that yeah, was... though that didn't. So I think there's a secret cutscene volume slider with mm -hmm. all the music and stuff mm -hmm. that's like even louder. Anyway, uh, hopefully we can we can fine tune it. Uh, this is always a problem with some games where it's just like no matter what you do, it's always just awkward. Can I speak with the high mage? Uh, maybe. I was going to cut the recording so I could remember to edit that cutscene properly. Oh, okay. Okay, can you talk to them? Yeah, sure. I want to see, see if, uh, what happens if I talk. Will you be okay. the immediate one to speak? Let's find out. Let's see. There are dark and terrible forces at work in the city. If we are to find the sorceress and defeat her, we must confront the dark cult that has taken root in Nuln and expose its secret master. There is nowhere in this forest of stone that they can hide from me. By shadow and steel, the cult will pay for what it's done. Hmm. I'm not I saw you fight at Kislev, young Asrai. Your loyalty and courage is not in doubt. But be wary and do not underestimate your foes. They are more treacherous than you can imagine. What is your command? The attack on the tower came from the sewers that stretch beneath the city. So long as the enemy controls the tunnels surrounding the tower, our position here is vulnerable. So people came up from the sewers. They never defend the sewers. Your first task is simple. Enter the tunnels and drive the cultists back from the tower. Kill everything in your path, but Beware. There is no telling what foul things await you in the darkness. All right. Come on, fairy. D no, I think my fairy actually gathers that light energy for me, perhaps. Oh, grabs you energy? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, into the sewers, repeatedly. Ah. Uh, Main quest. It, this always seems to be a, a setting in games... In, Poop in, demons! Yeah, beneath fantasy towns or cities or temples or castles, it's always the sewers. Hear the poop? <laughs> it spawns demons! Nerdlings! Wait, that's what these little goblinoid creatures are? They're nerdlings. Nerdlings? Yeah, they katamari together into like weird balls and it's kind of gross. Ah. Uh, let's see. Out gloves. And various other items. Whee. And once again with the lit candles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this game is is bad with them. I was actually uh, commenting on that during the beta. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'd asked if I had experience with this. I played this when, you were, when we were living out of a hotel back in uh, February. Oh, 
okay. So this actually had an early access a long time ago then. Yeah. Is uh, that a zombie? Or is that just a no, guy who dwells in that, the sewers? That's just a dude that dwells in the sewers that worships poop. The god of filth and disease. Well, is this god of filth one and the Nurgle. same? Well, wait, what? Nurgle. Nurgle is the god of filth and poop? Yep. Uh, and disease and rats, Scraven. Interestingly enough, he's kind of low-key the villain of, like, half of these games from what I've experienced. Then oh, again, I don't. okay, you're more familiar with the lore Not of... really. Wait. I've just played Vermintide, and Nurgle is also the, uh, one of the major Oh, gods. Vermintide is another Warhammer, Warhammer game? Yep, Warhammer 40k Vermintide, which is actually a game that I would like to play with you, um, at some point. Yeah, I'm always intrigued by the lore of Warhammer. Just see... So... The 40k is the uh, science Nurgle fiction. Is also slaw. Yes. Yeah, 40k. And then there's like uh, something about. Is it Dark Crusade? There's now, Dark Crusade. There's. Oh, no, Dark Heresy. They, they added like another sort of setting ish and some other stuff. It gets kind of confusing. Because they tend to have the traditional fantasy tropes of the elves, the dwarves, the orcs, and whatnot, but. Yeah, but then they have some like other factions and so on and so forth. I mean, I like the 40k ones because they have things like the Necrons yeah, and such. I, I think Warhammer 40k is a little bit more inventive. Uh, As mo most science fiction is because there aren't really traditional science fiction races per se. If you know what I mean? Yeah. There aren't ones that are universally... Yeah, I mean, there's like the Roswell Gray, but oh, like... Oh, who wants to... Oh, the energy. Yeah, if you she does, on energy, she does give me my energy back. Yep. Thank you, thank you, butterfly. <laughs> battery fly. My battery fly. Oh, slit shoes. Picked up some shoes. Oh You're yeah, just gonna... or orcs in uh, orcs in Warhammer 40k are sentient fungus. Did you know? Wait, they're they're fungus. They're a that? fungus. Huh? Yeah. But do they control the corpses of normal beings no. and morph them into orcs, no. or are they just the fungus orcs. just takes the shape of orcs? I, I don't get it. They also fly their ships entirely based on like pure belief. Well, isn't that like any kind of organic or biomechanical ship? It, it would be controlled by the mind. As no, no. To... I mean, like their ships can't fly unless they believe they can fly. Oh. And, like, if somebody else commandeered an orc ship, it would be useless. Of course. It's, like, literally made out of wood, not even airtight. Well, per precisely. that That's the deal with biomechanical or... Well, that really gives them too much credit. Yeah. Butterfly. Uh, gun doesn't work if you pick it up, but an orc can make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to play a game based on orc... Like, just an orc role-playing game, because that would be amazing. <laughs> Bad. You must believe. Because, effectively, the dumber you are and the more, like, willful you are, the, uh, the more there, successful you are There was another path that orc. branched off that way. Honestly, the path... Well, I guess in this case, that's the right direction. Um, now, but, I, I heard that you were stifling a comment about how you thought her voice... I don't like her voice <laughs> acting. It, it did like, seem a little bit like she was, I thought she was supposed to be a young elf, but maybe she's much older than I in first well, anticipated. We'll see about it as it goes along, but it, they just picked somebody with like a, a generic Scottish, I think, accent for this uh, dwarf. And like, it's hard to go wrong with that. Whereas like your elf sounded odd. Mm hmm. No, that's understandable. I don't know. I... It's very rare that I'll play a game and dislike a dwarf's voice acting, just because, like, <laughs> I, th I find well, the accent... you're very fond of dwarves. That is why you will always play a dwarf in these games. Generally, I... yeah. Uh, they were kind of my go-to D&D race, because they had next to no negatives. Because we didn't do a whole lot of uh, role-playing when I was younger. So, so like, what negatives would they possess? They I, would... I thought wisdom was a so, thing that they would so sometimes be hindered would by. Or was it... In... Charisma. <laughs> Charisma. Yeah. Oh, right, because so, wisdom, they're actually quite wise because yeah, of their... Yeah, they were they were great clerics, unless you were trying to turn undead, but usually I just hit an undead instead. Um. Yeah, I, I noticed that in some of the tabletop games, races receive... 
yes, positives, but also occasionally negatives. stat yeah, negatives. Yeah, so in, in Dungeons & Dragons, they did away with got negatives. plus two dexterity, minus two strength. Gnomes got plus two constitution, minus two strength. Uh, mm. Let's see, half-orcs got plus two strength, minus two intelligence, I think? Or Maybe. is charisma? I don't remember. I think it could have been intelligence. I think it was intelligence, but so it was a little harder being half-orc. Because uh, they're really like skills in 3.5. Doors, on the other hand, plus two constitution, so you were just in inherently tankier. And all you'd lose is charisma, and since we never talked to anybody, it didn't matter. Uh, so I was just like, I was just the beef cleric, or the beef fighter. Or I go human, kind of varied, but like, I, it was minus two to charisma and intelligence. Ooh, yeah, that's Ooh. why I rarely played. Alright, we're done. <laughs> Let's go back and talk to... Uh, the core gameplay f loop for this is mostly just like, go oh, kill things for a while. Up, oh, you're done. It's done. There's nothing in the tunnels outside the tower except dead men. Plenty of signs that there are more cultists deeper in the sewers, though, or I'm no dwarf. I do not doubt it. The servants of Nurgle flourish in darkness and filth. Our battle against the cult has only just begun. Well done. Return to me when you are ready for your next task. Yay. A thousand experience points. And, and gold. gold. There is grim news from the tower. Voss has learned that a large group of Magnus' guardsmen have gone missing. He believes they might have pursued the cultists into the sewers during the attack. So? I'd have done the same if that damn sorceress hadn't blasted me off my feet. They've been gone too long, Bracky. Either they've gotten lost in the tunnels, or the cultists have cut them off. Someone must go in after them and bring them out. Did you notice that they had done Magnuses with a apostrophe S? Yeah. Versus the apostrophe after the S? Are... Both of those technically correct. No. Usually plural, it's when it ends with an S, it's an apostrophe after the the only S. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if it's like humans apostrophe, that means it's collectively the humans. Mm -hmm. Where uh if your name is James, you'll have an extra apostrophe S. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so if you're if it's, if it's James's a, it's a name thing, yeah. Versus a I sing. So, by the way... I suppose uh, I don't know of many names that end in S. It, it looks like loot is instanced. So, if you pull up your inventory, you might as well grab some stuff. Okay. Which one was that? This. Ooh. I seem to have a blue item. Yep. The shabby so, tab. By the way, keep an eye out for magic find. You can very frequently find it on gear in this game. And we want to stack as much magic find as we can possibly grab. It makes this game stupid. Let's see, got both of those, got that. Do I sell anything? Remember it, I, you go up to this guy? Oh, we don't have the shop yet. Wait, it doesn't show you. Oh, that's it, interesting. Your character you... follows me while I'm doing inventory management. Well, that's nice, actually. I really like that. Hmm. Like, this doesn't add too much to the, the action RPG Wait, genre. We have a whole bunch of. Where did all these bows come from? I've been picking them up. So, loot is sort of. Uh. Loot is sort of instanced, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about me taking, say, your gloves. So I can just pick up everything for you, and we don't have to worry, which I I think is nice. I guess it kind of works that way in Diablo as well. I always hated trying to share loot in various games because it was just like, yeah, these people are just taking all my stuff. And I don't like it because I want it all. Because that's what I've been doing in Borderlands, and I feel like a complete knob. <laughs> you want it all. What? A song. Oh, we have another ability, by the way. Oh, I so, wonder what this will be. So I have, I think it's a, uh, a damage buff shout. Can I try mine? Yeah, sure. You have a... It's a bouncing bouncy blade. blade. Wow, and it's gone. Uh, goodbye. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll go off, find a nice bouncing blade lass, and uh, start a bouncing blade family. Some bouncing bladey it, babies. It, 
Ugh. It has a long recharge time, so yeah. I'm gonna have to wait before I can employ it again. Looks like I can keep my shout up all the time, whatever it does. We can check what the Maybe skills do later. Maybe it gives you later. a temporary buff or something. Yeah. Oh, they have an archer too. Yep. Is that a level? Yeah, increase? so we just leveled up, so I now have Avenging Charge. Oh. They give your new abilities to you Pretty very quickly. swiftly. Yeah. yeah. So, this is not a very long action RPG. Um, oh, this is just a blade that swirls around me and extends in range. Perhaps? Yep. Interesting. So, I was looking up some reviews oh. before we got started today. And according Butterfly. to what I've seen, it's like maybe 10, 12 hours long-ish. Oh, okay. Uh, and then there's kind of nothing to do. I think a lot of people are expecting this would be one of those where like... Wow, this is a lot of dudes. Uh, this is one of those where... Uh, where am I? Oh, I'm, I'm in the middle of that. At first I was kind of angry about the... the... I was kind of angry about the uh, the markers above our heads. Now I realize, no, it's kind of a necessity. Because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I lost where I was there. Mm -hmm. In the sea of opponents. Yeah, the sea of dudes. Which I, I don't know. I'm kind of fine with that. And these are all cultists. That yes. Are still... Yeah, they're they're cultists all over the place. Okay, attacking the castle. Now, what was up with that sorceress's hand? It almost seemed malformed, like it was. Oftentimes, or when you in nature? with chaos, you end up with like physical deformities as a result. Mm -hmm. At least, as far as I know. I mean, Nurgle. I think Nurgle is the most notable of them. Wow, that was an instant kill on him. The blade. Yeah. Well, it's got a long cooldown. I think I might have also hit him a couple of times. That too. This was the archer at the top of the stair. Oh, just nearly got out of the way of that club. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You really don't need to worry about taking damage that much. Uh, if we want, we can actually turn up the difficulty at some point. And I don't actually know where to do so. But if I remember it, like, it more or less follows the Diablo style. Oh, do you have a shield bash in a way? No, no, it's just a charge. I see. We... Now, I have some kind of green... There was a green pulse for a moment. That was interesting. Poison, perhaps? Oh, there's a lobber behind me of some sort. What was that? There was someone lobbing something, like well, throwing behind us. I I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, honestly, this is one of those where if we wanted to, we could actually just sprint past every enemy and nothing would change. I still need to see what my Y ability is at some point. Uh, wasn't, that's the, that's the blade that circles around you. Oh, correct. Yes. Rather like that one. That'd be good in the fray. If you ever got into the fray. <laughs> no, that is that is more your forte. You do get alternative abilities fairly soon. Not many though. I was actually kind of, kind of surprised at the lack of variety or like customization. They said something in this. about traps and such that my character was supposed to be able to sneak in and out of you combat, get a couple. shoot from afar, so and I think there's like three alternate basic attacks. And then, like, a whole bunch uh, poison, of... poison must be the glowing green. Yep. Okay. We could go down that side path, too. We could. I... Oh, oh, we're being flanked. I mean, they're just fodder. I've never quite understood, with all of these games, how there are so many people, you know, on the bad guy's side, surviving. Like, I, I guess the real answer is our characters are quite special. Uh, but I've never gotten, like, good in-universe explanations for, like, how... How this ragtag dark cult could overpower the Empire? Uh, you mean? Sort of. I mean, like, especially if you've got characters like the ones we're playing. I mean, they could be drawing from the citizenry and the masses. You know, no, like, well, the that, that was actually absolutely the point that, like, a lot of people were just turning to... The Dark God, because... Reasons. Mm -hmm. Um... Nope, Norgals. But, uh... But, like... I think the only universe I've ever run into where it explains why the NPCs can't stand up for themselves that well 
is actually uh, the Dragon Quest universe, hmm. where literally nobody else can level up except for the hero's party. And so everybody's stuck at the same power level with, like, maybe minor strength increases, but, like, RPG leveling is is very limited. Uh, which I thought that was kind of interesting. It's actually a major plot point of Dragon Quest Builders. Because more or less at the very end of the game, uh, you've been setting everything up so humanity kind of can return to what it was. And then uh, straight up, like, the goddess is like, Alright, well, you're done. Uh, li life can go on. And you're like, no, 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 I'm gonna go beat the bad guy. And she's like, please don't do that. You will die. You will actually die. And then what do you know? You oh, it stays in place. So I'm gonna have to be wary of where I put down. Oh, your your spinning. Yeah, I thought the spinning move? thing was for about oh, you, my character. You thought but... it would follow you around. Yes. So. Let's see. Thought... When are you gonna make a special two-year icon? I will. Ah, uh, my parents just left. Yeah. So, uh, for people that have not been following, I guess this past week, Shell's family's been here, uh, and so I've been moonlighting as a dutiful son-in-law while playing video games on the side, and so I've had no time for, like, luxury stuff. Uh, well, we got to see or, like, a lot of the hobbies. area that yeah, we, we normally did, wouldn't have. we did have. get to do some things. Uh, we got, we got, got to go out for some, Ooh, some wine Ooh, look tasting. at all this. Gross. Yeah, it's gross. Everything Nurgle-related is disgusting. <laughs> I, so, at some point, uh, I'll probably get a four-pack of Vermintide, too, and we can, like, try and take uh, Moose and Joe through that or something. Because Vermintide was fun. Hard, but I think it's gotten a lot easier. Pretty sewers. Power. I wonder why there was so much art, blah, so much artistry dedicated to this. I think the dwarves are down here. There's dwarven statues that you see, okay, all over the place. But they're not here for some reason. Also, this is a new, new tile, which I really like, actually. I have no idea what my right bumper move is. I think there were enough sound effects going on simultaneously that it interrupted the waterfalls for a moment yes. there. Uh, there was weird attenuation going on, and I don't know why. Ooh, is this person dead? Damned cultist. Lord us into a trap. Try to fight, but too many of them. Rest easy, warrior. You're safe now. They took them, and I went still able to walk, dragged them, screaming, into the darkness. Forget about me. Find the others. Oh, then he pops over dead. Yep. So they only took the ones who were able to walk, so it wasn't like a... Oh, we should probably check these side paths here. They this weren't taking the people the... who were vulnerable that would for a blood sacrifice or something. Yep. Why would they take the people who could walk unless they could transform them or put their bodies to use? Probably to corrupt them. Con yep. I mean, probably blood sacrifices work better when your people are healthy. <laughs> I mean, that too. Oh, <laughs> that would be an interesting uh, plot for a D&D campaign. Oh, everything reminds you of... Potential Dude, plot I, for I really a D &D cannot campaign. wait until or we start this campaign you, I say. because I I desperately need to play D and D again to get some of these ideas out. Yes. Um, but plot points. So you know how they they always do like virgin sacrifices because there's something about them being pure. Uh -huh. Well, I really like the idea of like some some like cult finds out that yeah okay virgin sacrifices it's maybe like five percent better but dwarves being like extra hale and hardy work real great as sacrifices. So they're rounding up dwarves left and right to uh, sacrifice to a dark god. So you have to save, like, a bunch of dwarven bachelors or something. <laughs> dwarven bachelors? I don't think bachelors are... is quite the equivalent. I mean, well, it, all the female dwarves are also bearded. So you really can't tell to begin with which ones are bachelors. So it's just... It's it is funny, though, because you were trying to draw female dwarves with beards I mean, I think, I think I'm still going they to do a test male. where... where, uh... Where Moose's character has a beard. <laughs> and uh, we can just use which of what whichever one she wants. <laughs> Let's see. Does anyone know any other games that are Diablo like? Titan Quest, Torchlight, Torchlight 2, Grim Dawn. Uh, let's see. What was. There is a. 
There's quite a lot of them. Path of Exile, easy example. Um... Warhammer Inquisitor. Now, is the Dark Lord a demon? Because this, they keep they keep showing this demonic creature in the loading chaos. screen. That's chaos. Chaos summons demons. So you kind chaos of summons sometimes. Demons. Yeah, Path of Exile would be the one I'd recommend. That and like the Torchlight series. Grim Dawn's pretty good, though harder on multiplayer because you can't actually listen to the plot very easily. I found your lost warriors. They'd been trapped by the cultists and surrounded. For what it's worth, they died well. Most of them, at least. And the others? They were taken alive? Not much point taking them if they're dead, is it? What does the cult want with a handful of prisoners, though? Not prisoner. Sacrifices. Offerings to the Lord of Pestilence in exchange for more power. We must do everything we can to prevent this. Go, and make whatever preparations you require. Then return to me as soon as you are ready. Thank <laughs> you. 